This is Chappie with Intense, and on today's edition of Tech Tutorials, we're going to walk you through the procedure for properly setting up your SAG on your full suspension mountain bike. All right, so properly setting up the SAG on your full suspension mountain bike is imperative to the overall ride quality and performance of the bike. So today we're going to walk through that process and make sure that both you and the bike are dialed in for your next trail ride. All right, so one thing we need to make sure of before we even set, start the SAG setup procedure is we need to make sure all our suspension is in the unlocked position. So for the rear shock, just simply flip the lever down, make sure it's pointed down towards the ground. And then over here on the fork, we're going to make sure our adjuster is pointed directly forward. And then we can begin to proceed. All right, so from this point on, now that we have a rider, we're going to have him take a seat on the saddle. Both hands on the grips and both feet on the pedals. We go ahead, make sure all his weight is on the saddle, and have him give a couple bounces on the bike to get the suspension nice and settled. Now the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and slide these O-rings down on the fork sanction and up to the seal head of the shock shaft. And then we're going to help support the weight of the rider as he steps off the bike. So now you'll see where the the seals have pushed up the O-rings, or pushed the O-rings down on the shock shaft. That's where our sag measurement is. And on rock shock suspension, you'll see that there's nifty little etch marks that give us a quick and accurate reading. On different suspension manufacturers, they don't have those etchings, so we'll show you a different process of doing that. All right, so you see here, after Jeff has gotten off the bike, our O-ring is set at just past 20%. Now, it's nice and easy to read with these etchings, um, so we can quickly determine at this point we really need to remove some air to, in order to get the proper sag set up. Now moving to the front, we'll see that the O-ring is a little bit over 20%. So the fork is going to be pretty close, um, but we will need to add a little bit of air to the fork as well. Alright, so we can see here we're just over 20% sag, so we need to make some adjustments in order to get us to the recommended 30% sag, which you can see right here. So to do this, we're going to actually remove some air to start with. All right, now we'll slide that O-ring back up to the seal head. Support the weight of the rider as he hops off the bike. All right, so you can see now we're actually a little over. So that's OK. This happens a lot, and this is all part of the tuning process. So now we're going to add a little bit more air back to decrease the sag number. So we're going to be adding a little bit of air here. So you see we're just under 150 PSI. So we're going to bump up roughly 5 PSI and uh, meet ourselves in the middle. But we also have to take into account the shock is charging the hose with air as well. So that usually accounts for 5 PSI, depending on your hose length. Okay, go ahead. Now we are at 160 PSI, 5 PSI increase, and then the 5 PSI for the amount of air in your air hose. Go ahead, take a seat. Do the same process over again. Equalize the shock. All your weight on the saddle. Both feet on the pedals. Both hands on the grips. Okay, and we'll slide that O-ring back up. And support the weight of the bike as the rider hops off. And there you have it. There's our perfect sag setup. O-ring is sitting just past that 30% mark. So now that we have the rear perfect, we're going to go ahead and move to the front. Now that we've completed our sag setup for our rear shock, we're going to go ahead and move to the fork. So Jeff, go ahead, take a seat, just like how we did for the rear shock. Both feet on the pedals, all your weight on the saddle, and both hands on the grips. Go ahead, give the bike a couple bounces, get the suspension to settle, and then take a seat. And now we're just going to simply slide that O-ring down to the seal head, as you see there. And then again, you can simply support the weight of the rider by just pushing up on the fork as he stands up and steps off. So you can see here, we are, we are sitting about 22 to 23 percent sag. Now, that's definitely within range, and it's totally rider preference, whether you want to sit anywhere from this 15% mark or up to this 25% mark. Um, a kind of a good standard base setting is to start at the 20% mark right in between those. So we're going to go ahead and do that here today. 
We're sitting right at 80 PSI. So everybody's a little bit different depending on their body position, the gear they're wearing, the bike that the suspension is on, or even temperature. So it's important to check this before every ride. Um, but we'll proceed here and we're going to add a little bit of air. So we're going to go up in that 10 PSI increment. All right, so we're at 90 PSI. So we can go ahead, unhook the shock pump, and then recheck sag. We'll do the pedals, both hands on the grips, and seat it on the saddle. All right, supporting rider weight. You can see we're right at the top of our 20% mark, so that's actually right where we need to be. So, right, so now that we have set both rear and front separately, we're going to go ahead and check the sag together. And this will be our final step to make sure we are right where we need to be for our, our sag. So go ahead, take a seat, both feet on the pedals, both hands on the grips. Give it a couple bounces just like before. All right, take a seat. Now we're going to slide the O-ring up on the shock shaft and slide the O-ring down on the fork. And we're going to support the weight of the rider as he steps off the bike one more time. All right, let's see. The top of 20%, perfect there. And we're right on the 30% mark in the back. So we are dialed. So at this point, the bike is, the suspension sag is set up perfect. Um, the last step to do is just put the, the caps back on and then we are ready to ride. Okay, so for Fox suspension and any other suspension manufacturer other than RockShox, um, we do not have any sag indicators on the shock shafts themselves. So instead of relying on the indicators, we actually will take the measurement of this gap here from the seal head to our O-ring, and then we'll do the same with the fork here in a few minutes. In this instance, I'm using a set of calipers. Um, you can use a ruler, a tape measure, anything handy that has um, millimeter increments. This is a 63 millimeter shock stroke on our tracer here. So we know 63 to get our our sag number, we are going to divide or time 63 by 0 0.3. So that ends up being 19 millimeters. So as you can see here, our gap is pretty much perfect. So that right there is a shock and bike setup with 30% sag for the rear shock. And that's 19 millimeters plus or minus a couple hundreds. Okay, so we're comfortable with where we're at here on the rear shock. So now we're gonna move to the fork. And as you can see, we obviously have more shock shaft or in this case, fork shaft. So this is, the rear shock is 63 millimeters. The fork is 160 millimeters. So using that same equation that we use for the shock, we're gonna use for the fork. So we're gonna times 160 millimeters by 0 0.2 because we're looking for that 20% sag number and that's going to give us 32 millimeters. So we're going to measure this gap that we have here between the O-ring and the lip seal of the fork. So as you can see here, we're pretty much right on the money again. So now that that's complete and that we're good, we are ready to ride.